Wow, can you believe it? The month of August is finally here. Duke football set to open up fall camp this month. Students return to campus in Durham. Basketball practice continues to move on here in the fall as they gear up for John Shire's first season. Tons are happening in the life of Duke Blue Devil Athletics. On today's show, we talk a little Duke football. Let's get it started right here on Locked On Blue Devils. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. Great to have you here with us on this Monday, August 1st, 2022, here at Lockdown Blue Devils. We are back to five days a week. The college channel on the Lockdown Network is back in full go as football is right around the corner. Basketball to follow. I know some schools in America are going back for their first day of school. Crazy to think about. Here we are in the fall in 2022, and Locked On Blue Devils is your one-stop shop for all things Duke Athletics. You can follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils and follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Be sure to follow and subscribe to Locked On Blue Devils for free wherever you get your podcast as you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it comes out each and every day. Also remember that make sure you're watching Locked On Blue Devils every day on YouTube and subscribe over there. On today's show, I'm so thrilled to welcome in my very good buddy, Josh Cox, from Duke Football Talk's Section 17 podcast. We're going to break down the Duke football schedule here in 2022 as it's football season there in Durham. Josh, the time is greatly appreciated. And man, oh man, here we are. The month of August has arrived. Yeah, fall practice kicks off uh, today, and uh, Duke football is officially uh, back for the 2022 season. So I can't wait to talk about the schedule today, man. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. We've got a lot to get into. It's crazy that football season is finally here, but onward we go. Mike Elko, year one, here we go. We saw ACC kick off in Charlotte a few weeks ago. And as you said, now the Blue Devils take it to the practice field. So on today's show, there are 12 games on the schedule for Duke. Conveniently, we've got three segments on this program, so we'll be able to do four games, a segment in chronological order, working our way through the schedule. All right, so over the weekend, we counted down the days to kick off on Lockdown Blue Devils. We were 34 days away, and on social media, we yes. honored and recognized Ben Humphreys as we're kind of counting down the iconic football players until the season gets started. Yeah, Ben Humphreys one of the fan favorites, I would say. Um you know, was here and started basically for four years and um, played through injury and just one of those guys, right? Uh, he, he was a California guy uh, that came in and I, I feel like uh, felt like he was at home from day one. And so, yeah, uh, really cool. What are we on today? Do you know what's the number? Do you know what's it? It would be now you're putting me on the spot. We're like 30. I think we're at uh, 31 or 32. Okay. Yeah, we're getting okay. closer. If we're at 31, I mean, that's easy. Breon Borders. That's 31. <laughs> I, I just, I, numbers, football numbers sometimes can get uh, get a little muddy in my head. But anyway, yeah, no, looking forward to it, man. We're getting close for sure. Here we are. We're counting down the days at this point, and let's go into the schedule. First game of the season for Duke, another Friday night contest. On September 2nd, they're going to open up the year against Temple, a team that they've only played once before in the history of Duke football. It was back in the 2018 Independence Bowl. So Duke and Temple right out of the gates. What's notable about this game, Josh? I mean, uh, for both teams, they have a new uh, head coach. Um, so that's notable. And, and actually, that's kind of, uh, you know, there's a theme for that throughout this year, a little bit in the ACC especially. Um, but brand new head coaches, uh, both teams, from what I'm gathering, looking into what Temple's got going on, both teams um, have a legitimate quarterback um, uh, race in the fall to see who's going to get that QB1 spot. Uh, both teams do. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Anytime you're starting out uh, the new era of a brand new coach, I mean, the game is important. You want to start off on the right foot. Um, both both squads do. Um, and so I'm looking forward to this. I mean, I, I believe, obviously – that with us being a power five school in the ACC, 
that we should have superior, you know, talent. Um, I don't know what the turnover looked like there at Temple with the coaching change, but, you know, Duke had a little bit of turnover, but I don't feel like Duke had as, as crazy of a turnover as they could have had of players leaving. And so I think we're going to be fine. Um, the one thing that we've said about the Elko era, and I believe we're going to see it in this first game, is the energy. I mean, the energy he's brought, and, you know, that's gonna that helps you in a, in a football game. I believe that gives you that drive on that that third and short, you know that that yeah. or that they defensive stop, you know fourth and short. I, I just feel like the energy that he's brought and that the weight room and all those things are gonna come together. And so now, personally too, our guys, Section Seventeen podcast guys, uh, we're ready for that, man. We're tailgating. We've already get we're getting our plans set up for that Friday night. I mean, it's kind of cool that it's on a Friday for the first game of the year, seven thirty start. So we'll be tailgating with the hard hat guys. So if there's local folks or people that come to games uh, listening or watching today, you know, feel free to come hit us up. We'll be in the B5 lot hanging with the hard hat guys. Going to be awesome. Duke and Temple to open up the season. All right, second game of the year, September 10th, the first Saturday game of the season for Duke. They're at Northwestern. Again, Duke had an exciting win, 30-23 to over the Wildcats last year. Uh, where Duke had a large lead and then had to hold on in that second half as Northwestern started to make a comeback but fell just a little bit short. So uh, now we have the return trip up to the state of Illinois to take on Northwestern in the second game of the year. Yeah, I mean, what what a great series that we have with Northwestern. I mean, yeah. I believe, uh, what is it, we're basically like at 500. I mean, it's basically equal uh, yeah. wins throughout the year. I was surprised. 11 and 10 is the record. Okay. Duke, yeah. Duke leads the series 11 wins to 10. And if you had asked me before we started to do the prep for the show today, I wouldn't have gotten as high as 21 all time meetings yeah. between the two programs. That's pretty cool that they've met that frequently. It is. It, it, it is neat. And, and I will say this the result of the Duke Northwestern game historically or, or in recent history doesn't tell you anything about the remainder of the seasons. I mean, we've beaten them before and then they go on to win the big 10 right. or, you know, or we've, you know, we've lost to them before and then they don't win another game hardly the rest of the season. And so like, it's kind of odd. I mean, look at last year, we beat them. We looked as good in the first half. That was the best first half, best half of football the entire season. And we beat them, and then we basically don't win another game, you know, the rest of the season if you want to look at it that way. So, like, you, this game is so odd because you can't tell anything from it as far as the rest of the season goes. Um, I do love – I think it's a natural matchup, Duke and Northwestern. Uh, we tend to recruit the same players. Uh, we're definitely fishing in the same pond uh, recruiting-wise. And, you know, we, we, we come together, and it's really a lot about scheme and a lot about, you know, uh, who's playing well at the time. But this should be a great game. And, and honestly, um, I don't see why this year should be any different. I know it's Coach Elko's first year. But like I said, I, I, I think this game is a toss-up. Um, and, and you know, just like every single year we play them. Here we are taking on Northwestern second game of the season. And I think it will be a toss-up, too. I think it's going to be exciting. Pat Fitzgerald uh, stole some headlines at Big Ten Media Days last week talking about just how much better he wants his football team to be improved. Uh, that there weren't that many questions for him in the main room. And he basically had an offhand comment like, that's what happens when you lose a lot of football games last year. And so yeah. Northwestern hoping to uh, rebound. Here's something, too, to think about. I mean, the, the closer that, that we're able to get to the football program, you start thinking about things like the logistics of your first away game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this is a whole new coaching staff from top to bottom. I mean, they will be going, they'll be flying, chartering a flight, they'll be – Landing like the whole process of like here's how we handle the road. Um, this is the first time, and so there's going to probably be some hiccups, some probably be some things that they tweak later. And so I don't know if that's going to affect the team uh, much as far as on the field, but who knows? I mean, there's a little, there's quite a bit of unknown there. Uh, so I, that's just something to, to, to think about and to keep our pulse on a little bit. These first couple of away games, they're going to be kind of establishing their, you know, the, the way they do it and the tradition of of what they do at away games. Third game of the year for Duke. The following Saturday, they take on North Carolina A&T. Last year, Duke won 45-17 over the Aggies in Durham. Duke and North Carolina A&T also played in 2019 when the Blue Devils won 45-13 at Wallace Wade Stadium. So Duke is 2-0 all-time 
versus North Carolina A&T, a game on the schedule in which you really want to play well on both sides of the ball, keep guys healthy, but be able to work on things that need improvement through the first two games of the season. And then the fourth game, Duke's traveling to Lawrence, Kansas. They're taking on the Jayhawks on the road where Duke won 52-33 over the Jayhawks last year in Durham. And Duke is 2-1 and one all-time versus Kansas. So this is the fourth meeting of the year. Tell me about the Kansas game, Josh. Yeah, that that's a tough one, man. Uh, Lance Leipold has got them. Uh, by the end of the season last year, nobody wanted to mess around with Kansas. Yeah. Um, they started off the year slowly and we caught them at the right time. Um, but man, this was, uh, I, I believe one, this is a no- Northwestern type, you know, 50, yeah. 50 game. In fact, you know, depending on how they start off, we can both come into this game, you know, riding high. And this would actually be a really, really fun game, uh, you know, for us to have, uh, this game is important because there's a chance that we're three and oh, right. And there's a chance that we could get to 4 0 by winning this game. So there could be a lot riding on this game. And then what you're looking at is you only need to win two conference games, which we'll get to here in a second, um, in order to go bowling, right? So, like, we could be there. Now, the other side of it is we could beat Temple and beat AT. We could lose to Northwestern. We could lose to Kansas and sit there two and two going, man, there's really not a path that we can see to a bowl game. So I understand that. But we, this could be a major, major uh, game in our schedule. Uh, if we could get this win, it could put us in great position. And so, look, they're, like I said, they're good. This is not the Kansas team of three, four years ago. This is not the Kansas team that Duke went to back like 2017 or whatever and beat them 45 to nothing. This is not that Kansas team. They're better coached. They got better talent. And they're going to definitely uh, put up a big fight. Kansas played really well against Oklahoma last year, despite or earlier after the fact when they played Duke uh, a season ago. So you're right. That team really did improve in the second half. And it seems like that football program, while Les Miles might not be leading it anymore, that football program might be starting to figure some things out there in Lawrence. Duke and Kansas, mainly basketball schools, but they're trying to play football from time to time. That's what I appreciate about the matchup is that we've got so many classic basketball meetings uh, spoiler alert, we'll talk about one of those on tomorrow's show when we do the basketball non-conference schedule. But here we are, we'll get the chance to see them play in football. All right, that's the first four games of the year. Let's move on to the middle portion of the calendar next here on Locked on Blue Devils. Today's episode here today is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. As we gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find people you want to talk to faster and for free. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs finds you the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We want to welcome you back in here to Locked On Blue Devils, J.J. Jackson, alongside Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks, Section 17 podcast. Onward we go. We finish the four non-conference games of the season. Again, Duke opens up with those four straight non-con games. Some years you see that fourth one towards the end of the year. Some seasons you see it all at the start. So Duke will close out the year with eight consecutive games inside the Atlantic Coast Conference and their first ACC opponent is Virginia on Saturday, October 1st. Last year, Virginia blew the doors off the Duke football team. They won 48-0 in Charlottesville. So this game will be played in Durham. Duke is 33-40 all-time versus the Virginia Cavaliers. And the Blue Devils have lost seven straight games against UVA. So if you do the math right there, 33-40 all-time. They've lost seven straight. So seven years ago, Duke and Virginia were tied 33 wins apiece 
in the all-time series. And for whatever reason, Duke just hasn't been able to get Virginia's number. Well, Bronco Middenhall, man, I mean, David Cutcliffe uh, probably sent him Father's Day uh, gifts, you know, for those last seven years. I mean, it was bad. Um, but, you know, Bronco Middenhall did us a favor, and he uh, he moved on. And, yeah. uh, and so uh, a new era. I will say this, you know, Duke fans putting this all in perspective, uh, we have lost 17 of our last 18 ACC games. And so we, we've got to make sure we, we understand what we're coming up against and what Mike Elko's uh, staff and players have to deal with here. Uh, but once again, here we go. Tony Elliott, once thought to be uh, a possibility at Duke, no uh, winds up taking the job in Charlottesville. I think there's a little bit of an underlying storyline there. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure how much the talks have progressed with Tony Elliott. I have no idea. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we got our guy and they got their guy. And um, so both uh, first-year head coaches, the biggest difference and the big advantage that Tony Elliott has is that he has a returning, incredible returning uh, quarterback, Brennan Armstrong. And so that's going to be a, you know, a, a positive for him. Here we sit in Durham with two good options in Riley Leonard and Jordan Moore, but not a, a confirmed starter yet. And we're not really sure what that offense is going to look like. And so that's going to be um, interesting for us. Um, the Kansas game, uh, this game, and we'll get to it here in a second, the Georgia Tech game, in my opinion, the season kind of rides on those three games. Um, and, and, and I say that because if we happen to win those first three, we've got to win the Kansas game. And I think these are our two most logical, you know, opportunities to win ACC games. And so yeah. I think this is a very important game. And, and I would love to see Coach Elko and, and Coach Elliott kind of have a little bit of a, you know, a rivalry there. That'd be great for football. Yeah, it's a chess match as well. Elko being a defensive-minded guy. Elliott yep. was the defense or the offensive coordinator at Clemson for so many years. So it uh, should be a fun one there on October 1st. You mentioned the other ACC game uh, that seems winnable. It's the second ACC game of the year for Duke at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech won last year 31-27 in Durham. Now the Blue Devils head to Atlanta, and Duke is 35-53 and all-time versus the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Man, why'd you have to bring up that game in Durham last year? <laughs> that that was uh, it hurt. It, that one hurt. Uh, you know, I, I we don't claim to be experts, you know, but we were sitting there watching that. There was a, a a third down play or fourth down play, third and long or fourth down, and we saw Duke bring the safeties up, and we couldn't believe they were showing blitz, and then they came with the blitz, and then all. All Georgia Tech did was just lob the ball up in the middle of the field, and their wide receiver went and got it. Game over. We literally saw it happening. Like, <laughs> no. Like, but anyway, uh, Jeff Collins, man, uh, head coach at Georgia Tech, he is in hot seat. Like, his seat is scalding hot, and it right. will be, especially by the time of this uh, game, more than likely. Um, and, you know, teams respond one of two ways when their coach is on the hot, hot seat. They either respond by getting them off that hot seat by playing well and here we sit and they're five and one and no one's talking about Jeff Collins losing his job. Um, or those teams kind of crumble under the pressure or maybe, maybe the hot seats warranted and the culture is not good and the team just begins to fall apart, you know? The, so who knows what Georgia tech team we will see. Um, but this is a winnable game for Duke. There is no question about it. If we are looking at the ACC schedule, um, this is the most winnable uh, in my opinion, yeah. the most winnable ACC game. And so I, I would love to see Coach Elko um, come away with, you know, obviously at least one ACC win in his first season. And I think this is the one to get. All right. Then we come back home to Durham, take it on North Carolina on Saturday, October 15th. Last year, the Tar Heels won 38-7 over Duke and Chapel Hill. Duke got off to a better start in that game. And then it kind of fell apart for the Blue Devils as North Carolina again won 38-7 Duke is 41-62-4 and four all time versus the UNC Tar Heels. UNC has won three straight years after Duke won three straight from 2016 to 2018. And then Duke is 5-5 five and five against North Carolina over the last 10 games. So it's been a fairly even series, but as of late, it has had more of the Tar Heel flavor. That's going to be the seventh game of the season for Duke and the third ACC game of 2022. Yeah, I mean it's the battle for the victory bell. It's it's you know it's the rivalry game for Duke, 
Uh, let's be honest, NC State's probably the rivalry game for Carolina, uh, but this is our our definite rivalry game. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the talent disparity is is definitely there right now with the, with the recent two to three years of recruiting that Matt Brown has done. Um, however, the on-the-field performance, I'm not sure matches up with that recruiting disparity, to, to be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> we always have a shot. Man, when it's Duke and Carolina – we always have a shot. Sam Howell no longer, um, you know, on campus in Chapel Hill. Um, I think he'll be uh, – I, I think he's got a great chance of being that starter in Washington, and uh, and kudos to him. And, uh, once again, I, I'm, I'm glad he's gone. Uh, move, move right along to the NFL. Two years ago, they lost those running backs. It's like, move right along. They do have a dynamic receiver in Josh Downs, um, and the quarterback situation is going to be a question mark in Chapel Hill. And so, hey, you look, you never know. And every time, doesn't matter what the sport is, and it doesn't matter what the records are. It doesn't matter what everyone's saying. Anytime Duke and UNC get on an uh, athletic playing field, anything can happen. And so, like, you know, this would be this would be great. I mean, we've been talking about the victory bell and how we'd like to we'd like to see it have a little bit more pop and pizzazz. You know, like the winner. You know, I don't know. UNC does it a little bit more than Duke does, but show that thing off a little bit more and, yeah. and make that a part of the culture a little bit more. And so, man, if we could happen to win this thing. I mean, I'd love to see us ringing that bell every every single home game, you know? It'd be awesome. And any win against North Carolina is something that the program is striving for and what you want to see happen. Uh, next up, October 22nd at Miami for Duke. The Hurricanes won 47-10 over Duke last year, and Duke is 4-15 and all-time versus the Miami Hurricanes. They also have a new head coach in the ACC. It's Mario Cristobal, who's come over from Oregon he is the hottest recruiter in all of college football, grabbing big names galore for that Miami Hurricanes program. He's trying to bring the U back, and that's the next game up on Duke's schedule. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game. I mean, he's done, I mean, so well already. Yeah. You know, rest in peace to the uh, turnover chain. Uh, that's no longer a part of the Miami program. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. We we have had games down there. There's a Deion Jackson game in the rain down there where we we won and and played above our heads and they didn't. And and you know, there's a lot of history there um, with, with Duke and Miami. I just don't see. I, I believe Cristobal is the is the man for that job. And so, like, I got to be realistic here. Of these four games we've just talked about, this one is the least likely, in my opinion that we walk out of Victor. But I will say, to wrap up this segment of four, because I know we're about to go into our final segment, to this to me, this is like the 50-50 section. Yeah. We're about to hit a really tough stretch in, in these next four games. But this one is kind of a, hey, we could, possibly, maybe. Um, and so I think these are important and important four games for Duke. And just the fact that it's your first four ACC games. So obviously, as we're going through the schedule chronologically, you know what positive energy and just thoughts and just everything can do for a team. And if Duke can gain a little bit of confidence from winning these ACC games earlier in the schedule, it will mightily help them in the back half of the season. To the same token, if you find yourself defeated from how the first couple of ACC games go, then you could see more of a lackluster performance, more widespread scores. I mean, here we are talking about some games last year, 47-10, to 10, a Duke loss, 48 nothing against Virginia. You could have more of those games if you don't gain the confidence that you had earlier in the season. So we will see how all of that factors in. As you mentioned, four games left to go. Let's take one final timeout here on Locked On Blue Devils today. Locked on Blue Devils here on this Monday. Our show brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource. For all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts, they have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Welcome back into Lockdown Blue Devils. JJ Jackson alongside my buddy Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast. 
Follow our podcast on Twitter again at LO underscore Blue Devils as we count down the days to the start of the Duke football season. All right, last four games of the year as we're going through the schedule for the Blue Devils in 2022. Another Friday night game in the ACC, Friday, November 4th at Boston College. The two teams did not play last year, but back in 2020, the Eagles won 26-6 to over Duke and Durham, and Duke is 3-5 and all-time versus the Boston College Eagles. A road game on a Friday night in the ACC. Yeah, heading to Chestnut Hill. That's uh, probably the most unique. Maybe you could argue Syracuse might be as just as unique um, heading all the way up there. Um, but just kind of a unique game, you know, for Duke. And I, I don't know. I mean, this uh, Boston College is do, do not sleep on this team. Uh, their quarterback play, Phil Yorkovic, is, is, is incredible. And, like, I really feel like they're going to be better even than what people think that, that they're going to be. Um, but it is a Friday night game. You know, no one is going to be uh, circling this game for Boston College. This is not a game they're talking about, you know, before the season starts. So you never know. Uh, but at the end of the day, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. I, I just I have a hard time, like, emotionally getting attached to games at Boston College for some reason. Like, the crowd is never – you can never hear the crowd. Like, it's yeah. just – it's kind of an odd, uh, you know, situation. Maybe the Friday night will bring out a little bit more um, in that. And this is also a tough one, you know, because of the the Duke travel. Uh, it's, it's a harder game to get to, and you typically don't have as many people, you know, traveling to that game as you would, say, a Virginia Tech, you know, a little bit closer, or Pittsburgh even, that's a little bit closer. And so uh, it should be interesting, but like I said, man, Boston College is good. They've got a well-oiled machine right now. Uh, a very difficult game for Mike Elko and the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, next up on Saturday, November 12th, Duke takes on Virginia Tech, a team that you just alluded to, the travel. But fortunately, this game – is in Durham. Last year, the Hokies won 48-17 over Duke and Blacksburg, another non-competitive game for the Duke football team. Duke is 10-19 and all-time versus the Virginia Tech Hokies, but VT has won two straight games in the series, and Duke has lost nine of their last 12 against the Hokies. So another series where Duke doesn't have the edge in sort of the all-time history and the trends lately – favor Virginia Tech, it's going to be a tough test for Duke as they're back at home. Yeah, and once again, brand-new head coach, uh, Justin Fuente, out. Um, <laughs> in fact, this is how bad Duke's season was last year, J.J. They beat Duke 48-17, to and Justin Fuente got fired the week <laughs> after that, that following week. And so it is what it is. Uh, Brent Pry is our new uh, – Head coach, um, familiar face in Blacksburg as well. Derek Jones, former assistant at Duke and then went on to Texas Tech, was hired by Brent Pry on a staff there at Virginia Tech. Um, Going to be a tough game for us, I believe. I believe Pry was the right hire uh, for them. I think that was a great um, hire, Penn State guy, and I had connections as well, you know, with, with Virginia Tech. And um, I think it's. I think it was a great hire. It's going to be a tough one because they are recruiting well already, and um, I, I once again it's a very difficult game, just a very difficult game for Duke. But we have seen us beat Virginia Tech in the past. Yeah, um, I, I was personally there for the Thomas Cert game um, up in Blacksburg when we beat them, and so we can do it. But once again, I, as I said in the previous segment, these last four games kind of give me the. Uh, like we could, but so this is this. I think this is the toughest stretch of our schedule. Yeah. Important to remind folks again, it's year one of the Mike yep. Elko era. So uh, could be tough at parts throughout the season, but in long term, and, and you kind of look at it a couple of years in advance, could be pretty awesome what Coach Elko is building there. And the game against Virginia Tech again at home this season for Duke in 2022 Saturday. Hey, JJ, November real quick. Yeah. Interesting comment. I, I, because you just said that the way the schedule is working this year, just for fans, it's literally in every other week. So yeah. it's home away every other week. That's I, I've never experienced that. I don't know if that's ever happened before. I don't know what I think about it, but it's kind of neat that we're literally every other week home away. That was going to be my one final takeaway at the end. So you just beat me to it. You beat ah, me by a couple of know, games I'm Sorry, there. man. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it is interesting. This team, as you said, at home a week and then you're on the road. And then at home and then on the road. 
for fans, there can be a lot of momentum in having consecutive home games back to back to back to build it up. There are teams in America that open up the season with five straight games at home and then have a back half of their schedule that features a lot of back to back road games and that sort of yep. thing. But for Duke to be able to go four consecutive or excuse me, all games home away, home away, home away is definitely noteworthy. And uh, you can't really build momentum on either side because right. you don't have multiple road trips or multiple home games back to back. It's certainly interesting. Uh, last two games of the year, this is a road game at Pittsburgh where the Panthers won 54 29 over Duke and Durham last year. Duke is nine and 16 all time versus Pitt, and they've lost six straight games against the Pittsburgh Panthers. Can Duke get back to their winning ways against Pitt? That's the big question uh, going into the season. Kenny Pickett is no longer the quarterback, but nonetheless, this will be a tough challenge. Keaton Slovis, the USC transfer quarterback, is now going to be the starter at Pittsburgh. Yeah, and I mean, that that was a great pickup for them, and Narduzzi's knows what he's doing. I mean, we've seen it for the last six years. Once again, another Father's Day card. You know, we kind of joked, like, there should have been one sent to Charlottesville and then one yeah. sent to Pittsburgh um, each year. And so this, this once again, is a tough one. Um, you know, the, the thing that I will say about uh, about what, what I feel like he's done there, Narduzzi's done there, there's a culture there now at Pitt, man. You kind of You kind of know what you're getting into, and it's not good. It's not good. Like, we don't like that. Like, <clears throat> they were one of, in my opinion, the best two teams we played last year. And, and we're closing the season out with, in my opinion, possibly still the two best teams we that we may play. And so um, kudos to them, man. I hope they can hang on to Narduzzi. I mean, I think he's awesome. And, uh, and their program is, honestly, it's goals. is where we want to be uh, in the next couple of years at Duke. All right, moving forward, our last game of the season for Duke, Thanksgiving Saturday, November 26th against Wake Forest. Last year, the Demon Dinkins won 45-7 over Duke and Winston-Salem. Duke is 58-41-2 and all-time versus Wake Forest. However, Wake Forest has won three straight games. do want to point out as well that Duke was 2-1 and versus Wake Forest when Mike Elko was the defensive coordinator for the Demon Dinkins for three seasons. So. Dave Clawson is one of his closest friends in the business. He followed Coach Clawson to multiple different stops, and uh, Coach Elko will face his old running mate, Dave Clawson, in the final game of the year. Yeah, and they can be really, really good. Uh, this could be a team that is closing out the season with with one or two losses. Um you know, anything can happen. We all know that. Uh, one injury, uh, Sam Hartman injury, is going to – would completely change that season for Wake Forest. But, man, if, if if Duke fans are being realistic, this team has been put together very well. This team – there's a lot of hype around this team. There's a lot of hype around North Carolina State, Wolfpack, and there's a lot of hype around this Wake Forest Demon Deacons team. And I think both of them are warranted. I, I really do. And so, going to be a difficult game. Um, there's not much to say because I don't think it's going to be overlooked because I do, I, barring injury, uh, this team is going to be fighting for the Atlantic Division crown, uh, fighting NC State, fighting, um, you know, uh, um, Clemson and, and whoever else. It's going to be a tough one. Um, and so this concludes the four game stretch of death, <laughs> um, in that, in that schedule, in my opinion. And so, um, who knows? Once again, we can win. That's why we play football. We lace them up and we go out and win. But that's going to be a difficult game to end the season. All right, there it is. It's the Duke football season and the Duke football schedule. 12 games to open up year one of the Mike Elko era. And as you said, at times it could be a difficult season this year. But we're just looking for the small little victories and kind of developing a culture for the years to come. Uh, back and forth, road away games. I mean, it's in, in home games. It's really interesting what the schedule kind of looks like. But uh, I tell you one thing, I'm excited for football season to be here so we don't have to sort of speculate what this brand new era of football could be. We can actually see things with our eyes in games that matter. You know, spring ball is one thing. Fall camp is one thing. What really matters are those Saturdays and for Duke, two Friday nights that you're playing a game that counts. 
Yeah, you're you're exactly right. And so we can't wait for this era of Mike Elko to get uh, to get off and running. And 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 we would be remiss to to not mention that this will be the final season of the divisions um, in the ACC. And, and let's be honest, we have no clue <laughs> what the ACC will even be uh, moving forward. But this is the final season of the divisions. Next year, we move to that three five five schedule um, where we'll be playing Wake Forest, North Carolina State and UNC every year, and then rotating everyone else every other season. Um, and looking forward to that. But this is the last season of Coastal Chaos. This is the last season of that. And so, hey, Duke fans, let's enjoy it. And and like like we've said, this is this is the Elko era. We know his energy's there. We're seeing the 2023 recruiting come together. So uh, let's just enjoy it. Don't put our expectations uh, too high. Let's enjoy this season as we just get – our foundation built for what we want this Duke football program to be. Josh Cox joining me here on today's edition of Locked On Blue Devils. Really enjoyed it. We've got our basketball non-conference schedule episode of Locked On Blue Devils coming your way tomorrow. So I'll talk to you tomorrow, Josh. Thanks again for the time today. Thanks, JJ. Have a great one, man. That's Josh Cox joining us here on today's edition of Locked On Blue Devils. Thanks again for making Locked On Blue Devils your first listen and first watch every single day. Follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Be sure to follow and subscribe to this podcast for free wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.